Why, hello there, everyone. Welcome to my review of the prologue episode for the new Gundam series called Witch from Mercury. I'm going to be titling this video Episode 1 Review, but it's possible that they might call the next episode Episode 1, since this is technically the prologue. So if that happens, I will just rename the episodes, or I'll rename the videos accordingly. But as of right now, that is the only episode that is out as of recording, so I'm just going to be calling it Episode 1, because, well, it's the first episode, obviously. It's actually, it actually would have technically been possible for me to record a review for this episode way earlier, because a few weeks ago, they actually did an early screening of this episode in Japan. But the only way I would have been able to watch it with English subtitles would have been to watch it with fan subs. And I didn't really want to do that because I did not want to risk watching it with misspellings or grammatical errors or mistranslations or anything like that because that would have been immersion breaking. So I decided to exercise self-control and just wait until it officially released in English, as it has. Plus, that way, I only have to wait one week for episode two, whereas if I had watched the early screening, if I had watched a fan-subbed version of the early screening, then I would have had to wait until now, plus another week, just to see a new episode, right? So, this is a little weird for me, because all the other shows I have ever reviewed on YouTube have all released in complete seasons. They released in batches of episodes, so I could just sit down, binge watch the whole season, and then I would write a review proper, or I would record a review proper for an entire season. But in this case, this will be the first time I review individual episodes, because this is the first time I'm reviewing a series that is updating weekly, but that's kind of exciting for me because then I get to upload a video every week, and I'm just warning you guys now, this is going to be a very low editing, minimal effort, one take kind of series. I would like to record these reviews without doing much editing because I do not want to commit myself to a high production value if I'm going to be recording one of these every week. So, anyways. The prologue for Gundam Witch from Mercury, it starts out very expo dumpy, but that's kind of what I expect from Gundam because Gundam is very political and it's very important to set up the world building. So even though the first few minutes of it seem really expo dumpy, it really does feel as if the pacing is really fast because... Uh, it feels like if okay, so this episode doesn't even have an opening. I'm assuming it skips an opening because of the fact that this had an early screening. I'm assuming that anyone that showed up to the early screening, they didn't want those people to feel as if they didn't get their money's worth or their time's worth, right? So I'm assuming that's why it skips the opening. So even with this episode skipping the opening, it feels as if it goes by so fast, the pacing so fast. Uh... But as for the expo dump, I'm thinking I'm actually going to go back and rewatch this episode because they go over so many politics and names of so many different factions so quickly that I feel as if some of it was lost on me because it's kind of hard to absorb that kind of thing when you don't have any context for it. So I'm thinking I might actually go back and rewatch the beginning part of episode one, maybe after we're like three or four episodes in just so I can reorient myself with the politics of this world because this is a new continuity this is an entirely new continuity i don't know if they've i don't know if they've named the continuity if they've named the timeline yet but i will have to keep an eye out for that it's kind of funny how they name gundams in this in this universe i guess a gundam is anything that's part of the gund line that is a mobile suit because the gund stuff was a line of technology not necessarily a weapon but then when they turned it into a weapon anything any kind of mobile suit that has a gunned interface is called a gunned arm which is funny i think that's i think that's the uh i think that's the logic behind how the naming conventions work in this universe so i thought that was an interesting take the way the whole interfacing with said gunned arms works it reminds me of Iron-Blooded Orphans and the 
Psycho Zaku from Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt. So it's definitely been in Gundam before. So I'm really curious to see how this show uses the same sort of sci-fi gimmick, but treads new ground maybe in terms of themes or just, just the execution. As for the antagonist, even though he barely had any screen time at all, I already like him a lot and... I think it's mostly because he reminds me of Trey's Kushernada, specifically because of his whole philosophy on warfare. Trey's Kushernada was my favorite character in Gundam Wing. He was definitely the most interesting character in Gundam Wing, but as a result, he was so underutilized and... One of the biggest problems with Gundam Wing, in my opinion, is that a lot of the characters had to sort of be... A lot of the characters' writing had to be sacrificed to an extent for the sake of the plot and for the sake of the story to go to where it was supposed to go by the end. So I'm hoping that with Witch for Mercury, this antagonist in Witch for Mercury is another chance at doing Trey's Kushranata justice. Because like I said, Trey's Kushranata, my favorite character in Gundam Wing. So this is almost as if Trey's got reincarnated and we get to see him do even more stuff, right? Maybe he can actually uh, be in a show that doesn't sacrifice his character writing so we can actually see where he would take things if he had more freedom to do so, right? And then, as for the main character, uh, the way... Oh, by the way, I should say this now. I'll probably put a warning at the beginning of the video on screen as well. But this, all of these episode reviews are going to be spoiler-filled. And the reason why is because I assume anybody watching an episode review, reviews for individual episodes, I'm assuming those people have already seen said episodes before they watch a review for the individual episode, because in that sense, it's almost as if we are watching it alongside each other, right? So I'm going to be... Just assuming you've seen the episodes whenever I review an episode, and then by the end of the season, when all the episodes are out and I've done an episode review for each episode, then I will probably make a more concise, a more conventional review of the entire ser of the entire uh, season at least. And th that will be a spoiler-free review. That'll be a conventional, concise, spoiler-free review like the ones I've done in the past. But as of right now, I'm just assuming you've seen the episode. So I'm going to be talking about spoilers now. The whole bit with the main character just popping off and shooting all of the other mobile suits, potentially not really fully comprehending that she was killing people, it reminds me a lot of Ender's Game in that the main character is some kid that isn't fully aware of what they're doing for one reason or another. Obviously, in, Ender game, in Ender's game, he was being tricked, and in this case, she wasn't really being tricked, but the dramatic irony of it is still the same nonetheless. I'm really curious how they are going to write this main character because they establish right out of the gate that she is so strong, right? She's an overpowered main character, which is extremely difficult to write. It is extremely challenging to write an overpowered main character well. So I'm really curious how they are going to write her for the rest of the series. And the reason she's so overpowered in episode one or in this in this world is because uh, my I'm going to give you my interpretation of what was going on so you can correct me if you have uh, a better interpretation of it. But... How I understand it is that the gunned arm mobile suits can only be, well, so I thought that the gunned arm mobile suits could only be uh, interfaced with by a human with some kind of gunned implant, right? That's the, uh, the interface conduit, if you will, right? That's how they are able to directly interface and communicate with the Gundam to make it move however it's supposed to move. But the main character, who's a four-year-old, who presumably doesn't have any kind of Gund cybernetics, was able to interface with it just fine. So I'm assuming that any human can technically use 
a gunned arm. It's just that if you don't have the gunned cybernetics, it's going to be too much stress on your body and it'll just injure you or kill you, right? So I'm assuming, I guess this would be a prediction because I don't think they really said anything about this explicitly, but I'm expecting the reason why the main character is has such a high synchronicity right with the Gundam is because I'm assuming maybe she was born in space and maybe she's one of the first children born in space in this universe and so she might be this universe's version of a new type but it doesn't seem to be so binary in this universe in that you're either a new type or an old type because I got the sense that with the whole Gund cybernetic system it is more of a spectrum so if you have more gunned cybernetics, I guess it's a combination of genetics as well if you're just able to handle it inherently. But by either some combination of genetics and also the amount of gunned cybernetics you have, you're able to take more of the gunned arms feedback, right? Because when they were using these mobile suits, they were talking about, uh, what were they saying? They were saying like permit levels. They were upping, they, they were... Uh, establishing permit levels and progressively increasing the permit levels when they were using them. And the sense I got, what I could infer, was that the permit levels was basically the choke, the gas intake, for lack of a better term, how much feedback they are allowed or able to take. So reasonably, you can expect some people can handle it better than others, etc., so considering the main character is already able to sync up with the Gundam so well, I don't even know if she's going to need gunned cybernetics. I'm really curious where this is going to go, right? As for the animation, I haven't even talked about the animation yet. Usually that's the first thing I talk about. I think the animation is good, right? It's obviously not as high budget as something like... Uh, Thunderbolt or Gundam The Origin or any kind of OVA like that, right? This is supposed to be a full-length show, full of 24-minute episodes, presumably uh, 50 episodes long, right? So you can tell that the animation has a budget, but I think they are executing it well. And they do use a little bit of CG, but the way they're using the CG, you can tell, is very conscientious. And I don't think we have to worry about them using CG out the wazoo or anything because the ships were CG and part of the asteroid base that they were in was CG but none of it looked bad and it didn't look bad next to the 2D either. I think they they did a good job and it seems as if they have a good sense of making the CG work with the 2D so I don't have any worry about that. I'm glad that the art style isn't as stylized as crazy as iron blooded orphans i do like the iron blooded orphans art style for that show but I, I would prefer that show to be the only one that looks like that personally my favorite kind of art style for gundam would be gundam the origin art style because that's pretty much the original 0079 art style but made even better because of modern techniques and this obviously, which for Mercury obviously doesn't look like that. Which for Mercury doesn't look like Origin or 0079 designs by any means. But it is a very, uh, it's a very inoffensive art style. That sounds like an insult, but it's not. I think an inoffensive art style works very well for the kind of feel they are trying to go for with this show. And I think they are trying to go for a very classy vibe. So having some sort of weird or loud art style would be a little distracting and get in the way of that vision, I think. So anyways, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if I missed anything or if I misunderstood something, because like I said, I definitely want to go back and not only refresh myself on the politics, but I also need to go back and refresh my understanding of the terminology between the guns and the gunned arms and like the non-gunned arm mobile suits and the factions anyways i will see you guys later and thanks for watching and bye for now